Good morning and welcome to the Covert Knits Podcast. I'm your host, Abigail Covert. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is Sunday, July 5th, and I'm coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, this is my podcast where I chat about knitting, yarn, and any other crafts that I might be up to, and then also anything else that strikes my fancy. You can find me online at, at covert underscore knits on Instagram and at uh, and covert knits on Ravelry. Um, the links are, or the information is right here. Excuse me. Um, also I always forget to say this, but, uh, anything I talk about in the episodes, um, I link to in the description box below. So the show notes are just hit the down bar and you can see anything that I talk about. Um, and I try to link as much as I can. And then, uh, I just also want to thank everybody who is a returning viewer. And, um, if you've subscribed, thank you so much. I, it, every every time I get to chat with a new member of this little community I'm trying to build here is um, it's just amazing that's that's what I'm here for so if you're a returning viewer thank you so much if you're new thank you for checking out my podcast I really appreciate it um, and I hope that you enjoy uh, I have a lot of knitting content to chat with you guys about today so let's go over what we're going to talk about uh, I'm going to do all of the wrap-up stuff for my uh, Pride Sockathon 2020 knit-along that I was hosting in June. So I have one final finished object to go over in that. I have pulled winners for our five prizes. Um, so we will I will announce all of those. Um, and then I'll show you all of the socks that I knit along and what my total donation uh, is for the Trevor Project. So that we'll do that. I have two other finished objects, including what I'm wearing. So we'll chat about that. Um, and then I have two brand new cast-ons, a couple of podcasts I want to chat about, and a little bit of stash enhancement. And I think that should wrap us up for the day. So let's go ahead and get started. As I said, we're going to start with the Pride Sockathon 2020, which wrapped up on June 30th. It, it was the knit-along I was running this year for Pride Month. Um, the idea being that you cast on a pair of rainbow socks during the month of June. Um, and if you hashtagged it with a the hashtag, uh, you were entered to win one of our five prizes. And um, while that was going on, I was trying to knit as many pairs of socks as I could. And for each pair that was completed um, of rainbow socks, then I don't will be donating $25 to the Trevor Project. I haven't made my donation yet. Honestly, I'm waiting for payday. So that will happen next week. And I'll let you guys know once that's done. I'll probably post it over on my Instagram account. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So Let's do prizes first because I don't want anybody to have to wait. So the first prize is this uh, beautiful skein of sock yarn from Toothmax Yarn Company. They are a dyer out of Edmonton, Canada, and this is their pansexual pride colorway. I've shown this quite a bit. Um, I did knit with their yarn as well during the sockathon. I'll show you that in a minute um, if you haven't seen it in other episodes. So this was prize number one, and this actually... Um, this was all random number generator. I just looked at the number of um, uh, photos that used the hashtag, took out anything that was mine, um, and we had about 85 photos in there that were hashtagged using the hashtag. Um, so this one went to um, Instagram user Sushi Love Knits, who is Heather, who I actually got to meet uh, virtually uh, last week. She happened to join my Omaha Knit Night virtual meetup, which um, I we host twice a week usually, um, and it's virtual. Anybody can join, whether you live in Omaha or not, and she joined us. So Heather, congratulations. Uh, if you just want to send me a message on Instagram with your mailing address, I will get this out in the mail to you. Um, I am terrible at getting things out in the mail, so I have contacted my mother who's my mail person um not not officially just uh my person who I usually request do those things and she has agreed to ship this out so um I'll get it all packaged up and hand it over to her and she uh she will take care of that so just send me a message and we'll get this done congratulations Heather I'm so excited and I'm thankful that I got to meet you and put uh your uh face to the name um right before I did this I actually knew that you would won um, that night that you joined knit night, but I couldn't say anything. And for those people that know me in real life, I am terrible at secret keeping so that I was able to not say anything is kind of a miracle. So that is prize number one. And prize number two is a, the, it was donated by the designer. It is the pride sock collection ebook. It has eight 
uh, sock designs in it. Um, it is by Makers Knitting. Also, uh, his name is Matt Akers. Um, I'll post a picture right here of the designs. So the the entire ebook collection was donated, um, and that winner is uh, Boston Jen One, who happens to be Jennifer Lasson. Um, she's the host of the Downseller Studio podcast. It's an audio podcast. You can find it over on Apple Podcasts. Um, and Jen is also um, donated some of her patterns um, as prizes as well. But she was taking part in the knit along as well. So she was the winner of the Pride Sock Collection. So congratulations, Jen. Um, I'll make sure that Matt knows that you're the winner so that he can get that over to you. And then we have three more prizes. Um, Jen was kind enough to donate... Um, three different, uh, for three different winners, um, a single one of her self-published patterns. Um, so we have three winners for that. The first is, um, Angelina Ladon, who is somebody that I know who also is an Omaha, uh, resident and she is, um, uh, uh, in my Omaha Knit Night group. So that's Angie. So, uh, thank you so much for that, uh, or not thank you, but thank you for joining in, Angie, um, and taking part, and you get to pick a pattern from uh, Jen's self-published patterns um, as your prize. And then the next one was Sheila MCL, uh, and that is Sheila on Instagram, um, and she will um, also get to pick one of Jen's prizes. And the third and final one um, to pick one of Jen's patterns is um, Instagram user Intella57. Um, I put them all down here for you to read. Um, so uh, if you are any of those winners, please just reach out to me on Instagram and I'll make sure that the designers um, have your Instagram handle. Um, if you use Ravelry, then that's probably where they'll send it to you. If you are unable to use Ravelry at this time, please let me know and we will figure out a way to get you the patterns. Um, I, that, I don't want that to stop anybody from being able to get a prize. So uh, let me know. So congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much for taking part in this knit along. Um, I did this last year and it was literally just myself knitting socks. Um, so th this year I had company was just the best thing in the world. Uh, and I, I just, I couldn't be happier. Um, so yes, thank you very much. Um, and we will be doing it again next year. So if you have still have some uh, rainbow sock in your stash, you can save it for next year. Or if you didn't have any but wanted to join in, you know, you've got a whole year to look for rainbow yarn and um, add it to your stash so you're ready to go for next year. So uh, thank you for uh, that. And then I wanted to show you my first finished object of the day, which is my final pair of uh, socks for the Sockathon. It's a complete pair, so I'll show that. Okay, so this is was pair number seven, and it was knit using uh, a Whimsical Wood Yarn Company. Um, I think it's their Pixie Toe Socks. I have misplaced the label, so I'm unable to show it to you. Um, this was their colorway Rainbow Ass. Um, they have a whole ass line. Uh, I, I know I mentioned that before. I have at least one other skein of theirs in my stash. Um, I loved the way that this uh, flashed and pooled and striped um, and also the heel. I know I've showed this before how much I love the colors on the heel. So this was pair number seven. Um, for all of the socks uh, for the knit along, I used uh, Mina's two at a time sock pattern by the Knitting Expat. It is a free pattern. She does have um, paid for patterns as well that are beautiful. Please check her out as a designer. Um, but I, I've had her free pattern and that's how I learned to knit two at a time socks. So that's what I've used. Um, it's 64 stitches cuffed down is the uh, version I do, um, with a German shirt row heel and a semi rounded toe. Um, I knit mine on us one and a half, which is 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, and so, yeah, this was pair number seven. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to have this in uh, added to my stash of socks. So seven, um, but let me show you here. So this is my stack of socks that I finished. So we'll do just do a really quick review. This was pair one. This is mustache yarn um, in their self-striping colorway dark side EPV with a contrasting heel. This is Lola Bean Yarn Co. And this is colorway Make Way for the Bad Guy. 
I have other Lola Bean in my stash. I'm kind of been hoarding it. Um, but this was, I think this was the first skein of hers that I was able to purchase. And I, it's not a true rainbow, but I see rainbow in it. So, uh, that's, that was pair number two. Pair number three was Turtle Pearl Yarns. And this was um, in her self-striping turtle toes. And the colorway is What Does It All Mean? Again, with a contrasting heel. Pair four was Yarn Ink in Black and Rainbow with Pink. I feel like this is very Eastery, Easter egg, kind of. And again, I've had this yarn in my stash for clo going on five years at this point. That was pair four. Pair five was Knit Circus Yarns in their Greatest of Ease base um, in their matching sock uh, cakes. So this was colorway Love is Love. And I just love the gradient. I have, again, a whole bunch of, knit of their gradients in my stash, uh, several that I'm hoping to knit up for holiday gifts. Five. Pair six was my To The Max Yarn Company in their LGBTQIA Pride colorway. This is my very favorite pair that I knit this summer and possibly ever. Um, I love this yarn. I made the legs extra long because I just couldn't stop knitting. Um, it just makes me so happy. So that was pair six. And then again, pair seven is Whimsical Wood Yarn Company, Rainbow Ass. Okay, so those are my knit along socks for, oh, sock overload. For the year, thank you again for everybody for taking part and joining in, and I can't wait till we do it again next year. All right, so let's move on to my other two finished objects. Um, once I was done with socks, I was really ready to be done with socks. Um, I'll get some more on the needles here shortly, but um, it was, it. sorry, my cat is doing crazy things. Um, it was nice to be able to knit something on a little bit bigger needles and step away from the socks for a minute. So um, the next finished object I have is another one of my quarantine hats. This is just a pattern by myself. Um, I just cast on, I think this is worsted weight, so I think I cast on um, 88 or 96 stitches, I can't remember. Um, I knit about an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch of ribbing, and then uh, move to a bigger needle size. I think I cast on with size six and then the body is knit on size sevens. Um, and I, I'm literally using scrap yarn. I knit till I ran out of the gray, picked up with the, the burgundy, knit till I ran out of that, picked up with the, um, blue and knit till I had just, uh, a couple of yards left and then I did a rapid decrease and bound off. So this is used knit using um, Malabrigo Rios, again, all leftovers. The gray is uh, Plomo, which this one is uh, pretty gray, but oftentimes when I see it, it's a little bit more, uh, got a little bit more purple in it, um, but this was pretty gray. Um, this is Cumparsita. Uh, the Plomo I originally knit um, another hat with. Cumparsita I used as a baby blanket for a friend. I have no idea what I knit this original with, but this is the colorway denim. Um, and I had a little bit of that left. So, let's see here. It's a little bit of a slouchy, but not too much. So that's that. This is, um, I believe this is hat number nine that I have knit since quarantine started, all with leftovers. So that was finished object number two. Let me take a drink here. Before we get to finished object number three, which is my sweater that I'm wearing. This is the City Limits sweater by Tannis Lavelli of Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, I knit mine using Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock and the colorways are linen, um, the green is basil. I'm gonna stand up here. Uh, gold mine, grapefruit, cayenne, and then the red, which is on the bottom as well, is China doll. I love it. I love the finishing. I chose to do the I cord finishing on all of the um, portions of it. There you go. 
Um, and I will actually insert a picture right here of me wearing it. Um, I had my mother take pictures um, over the long weekend um, in their newly finished Italian garden. So uh, I thought I would try uh, have her do that. Um, I love the detailing at the raglan increases and then also that runs along the side. I really love it. Um, let's talk a little bit about yarn. So this pattern was, um, I knit the, I think it was the 51 or 52 inch bus size. Um, I used six colors and I did run out of yarn. Um, so it is supposed to be long sleeved. Um, but I ran out of the green and the yellow. All I had left were um, just in-sweep-in weave -in scraps. Um, this is what I have left of the pink, the grapefruit. This is what I have left of the cayenne. And then these are what I have left of the china doll and the linen. So. I, I'm thrilled by that because this means that, you know, I don't have a lot of leftovers left and um, I will use these in um, socks as contrasting heels and toes or um, just for a contrast stripe in a sock. So I'm really excited that I only have a little bit left. And I'll show you this. I pulled this out for you. Sweet Georgia yarns. Okay. Um, also, I was really thrilled with the idea that um, I pulled all of this yarn from Stash. So I saw this pattern, loved it, and I could have gone out and bought a gradient set or any of the sets that were out there for this pattern or something similar. And there are beautiful ones out there and I, I love them. Um, and of course I would love to support those dyers, but I also want to shop my Stash. You can see it's rather large. Um, this is just a tiny portion of it. Um, and I have a lot of yarn. So I was able to go into my stash and pull these six colors of yarn, all purchased at different times for different projects. Um, I think the linen and the gold mine, the gold mine, and then the grapefruit were all purchased together. I think I was originally going to make a dotted raise, which would be beautiful. Um, but, uh, and then the other three were all just separate that I was going to make uh, socks out of so that I was able to pull them all together and put them into this project and then only have just that tiny little bit of yarn left um, really made my honestly made my day. Um, it is not something that happens very often for me, especially since I started knitting garments. I tend to, as soon as I see a garment that I like, I go and, and buy yarn for it because so for so long I wasn't buying sweater quantities of yarn. So to be able to go into the stash and mix and match and find something that worked. And I really liked that I was able to do this all in one um, yarn in one base, but I, I didn't have to there, you know, that that just happened to work out this time. Um, it was a real joy and, and a pleasure um, to do that. So if, if you have a large stash and you're looking to knit a pattern like this, um, there are lots of different patterns like this out there where they marl or they fade. Um, you know, tr look in your stash first. Uh, I, I love supporting indie yarn dyers, but it's always a good idea to shop your stash if you can, um, especially uh, right now, you know, uh, it's just, uh, it's a, and it's so much fun and I feel so accomplished um, with my finished sweater. So I did do the short sleeves, um, because I ran out of yarn. Um, and I could have lengthened them a little bit with the little bits I had left, but I wanted the, uh, sleeves to, uh, match the, the style of the body. So they all are the same. Um, each color repeat in the sleeve is the same length. It is, uh, I think I did three rounds of each color, um, as, and then did three rounds of the marl and then three rounds of the next color. Um, and then in the body I did with the exception being up here, um, where I was doing the yoke in the, sh uh, shaping, um, all of these sections are 14, uh, rounds. So, uh, and I, she, in the pattern, she has the math to help you figure out, uh, how much yarn you're using, how many stripes you'll have, um, and how, how to measure and figure out, um, what, how long you should make it and how long you should make each stripe. Um, I feel like this fits better than almost any project I've ever knit. Um, I did not gauge swatch. I never do. I, people yell, I get it. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> and I, I just am going to live with consequences or rip it out and knit it again or give it away. And, um, that's, 
that. So uh, please don't yell at me for not gauge watching. That's just my preferred method. But this fits really well. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, it When I went to go block it, um, I had tried it on before I put it in the water and it fit perfectly. Um, and then I, it's superwash yarn and I put it in the water and, and then I let it soak and I pulled it out and did all the stuff and laid it out flat to dry and it had grown so much. And I was terrified that it was just going to be this huge oversized, uh, baggy sweater. And for me, for this knit, that's not what I wanted. So I let it dry about 75% of the way. And then I stuck it in my dryer, um, on like a low heat for, um, I think I did 20 minutes and um, I went down and pulled it out. And honestly, I probably could have done 15 minutes and it would have been fine, but it shrank back up and it fits perfect. It's exactly the fit I was looking for. Um, it, I love how this looks. I'll wear it to work with jeans. We can wear jeans at work. So um, it's a great casual top for the weekends. Um, so I, I love it. And honestly, if it's not too humid out um, with the short sleeves, even though it's a worsted weight sweater, um, I feel like I can wear it um, when it's not, you know, as long as it's not blazing hot. So uh, it's great to add to my wardrobe and I would definitely highly recommend this pattern. Again, it's the City Limit sweater. So, so that finishes my uh, finished objects for the week. Excuse me. So I have uh, two uh, works in progress that I've started. So the first one is, I just cast this on literally this morning. Um, it is being housed in my Lila Styles bag, my Gilmore Girls bag. Sorry if you can hear my cat running around. Um, so Lila Styles on Etsy. It's getting really blown out there. There we go. Um, I have a couple of her bags. Um, I have had them for a while and haven't used them yet, so I was excited to get a project in there. Um, so this next project is what I'm doing here today guys um this will be the in the light shawl by Casey Day Crozier so I just cast this on this morning um I am using this colorway for the first colorway it is leading men fiber arts this is their old tag I've had this for a long time um it's this is their show stealer base which is their MCN 80 superwash merino 10% cashmere 10% nylon so 801010 MCN, it's 435 yards for 100 grams. Um, again, show stealer is their base. It's a fingering weight. And then this is colorway Envy. And then this is a three color shawl. I'd knit one before. The next color will be this really pretty yellow. That color is called Rubber Ducky. And then the final color is this creamy white and it's called Nude Scene. They're all leading in fiber arts, all the same base. Again, I've had this in my stash for quite a while. Um, knowing that I would knit a three color shawl out of it, um, I'm a big Oregon, University of Oregon fan, go Ducks. And um, these are their colors, green and white, are the, or green and yellow are the colors, white or black as an accent. So um, I, when I saw these yarns in my local yarn shop, I knew I had to buy them and knit them up into a three color shawl so I would have something fancy to wear when I'm cheering on the ducks. Um, so yeah, this is potato chip or popcorn knitting or whatever you call it at its finest. I, again, I knit one just a few months ago and I couldn't put it down, couldn't stop knitting it. So this, this morning I had to stop so that I could uh, record the podcast. Um, and I will be back to knitting this, um, as soon as I'm done here, uh, as for, you know, as I'm uploading to, to YouTube. So, um, that is just, just the beginning. Um, it goes so quickly. It's three fingering weights, but you hold them double. Um, so you make a worse weight. Um, this one will have fringe like my previous one did. There's an option in the pattern to not have fringe, um, if you don't want it, but I loved how the last one looked with the fringe. So this one will have fringe as well. So that is my whip one. My whip two is my next, uh, sweater garment. So this is the Wave of Change uh, jacket by Denise Bayron, uh, Bayron Handmade. And I am doing my first version of this, um, because there will be a second, um, out of 100% organic linen. Sorry, this is, these needles do not want to cooperate. So I've cast on the collar, and then I'm a third of the way through the raglan increases. And it's a uh, stockinette with just uh, the uh, 
a row of garter in there um, to break it up. Here's how the back looks. I'm excited to have this linen as kind of a lightweight um, spring summer jacket to throw over things. Um, so there's the yarn. I've used this yarn before. This was the yarn I used for my Mira um, tee, which I made earlier this year. I had leftovers, so then I bought a little bit more so that I could make this. Um, it is Quince & Co. It's their Kestrel. It's 100% organic linen. Um, this is colorway Ebb Tide, which is number 508. And I think um, I'm intending to make the 54 and a half inch bust size on that one um, so that it is a little bit big on uh, me. Um, and, but I'm gonna knit everything to scale because as I've been wearing my mirror tee, I've noticed um, that the weight of the linen does um, get, give it some length. So I'm not going to lengthen the jacket at all like I normally would. I usually like to add a little bit of length because I know as I'm wearing it, it will lengthen um, and I don't want it to get to be too long. So that is my project number two. I just cast that on yesterday um, during uh, a, our very small immediate family barbecue. So um, I've got, I got quite a bit done last night um, and I'm really excited to get that working up. I'm hoping to have that done by mid-month because uh, the Quiet Careers Craft Along is going forward and they are starting this month a little bit delayed with everything that happened in June and is currently happening, but they are going to host this uh, their Craft Along this summer still. It starts July 13th, runs through September 13th, and I have another uh, garment project that I'm going to start for that, so I will chat a little bit more about that next week, but I'm hoping to get this done in the next two weeks, um, which I think won't be too much of a problem. Um, so that I can be ready to go for that cast on. And I didn't mention this. I, I completely spaced it. I'm tear. I'm, I'm, my brain is all over the place today. Um, the, in the light shawl, I am knitting this for the needles at the ready, um, podcast. They are hosting a knit along. It's the, let's hear it for the boys knit along. Um, the Instagram hashtag is N A T R boys 2020. Um, and they are, running the knit along to highlight uh, male identifying yarn dyers and designers and also patterns written for male identifying people. Um, so this yarn is from Lady Min Fiber Arts, male identifying yarn dyers. So um, that is going to be that knit along. That's going to be my entry for that. Um, and then um, I'm knitting this on size eights. I'm terrible. I apologize. Um, I am knitting this on size tens, the ribbing in size nines. Again, I didn't gauge swatch. Um, using the needles it calls for. We'll see what happens. That is being housed in another one of Lila Styles bags, also a Gilmore Girls themed bag. Her shop is linked in the show notes below. Okay, so uh, okay, we've got whips. FOs, stash enhancement. Okay. So I saw that designs by Dells and Max the Knitter were having an update in their shop, Le Garçon, Le Garçon. excuse me, my French is terrible. Um, so Dyed by Dells is his handle when he's dying. It's Vincent Delon. Um, so these are the colors I bought from his shop. I've got Mini Sweet, Harry Suit, and Betty's white. Just get a little bit blown out here. There we go. Um, I bought the Dell's BFL sock, which is 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. So um, I don't have a lot of BFL sock in my stash, but um, I, I loved it and I wanted to do three colors. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm not sure if it'll be a three color cowl or project or, um, I'm or shawl. I'm not sure, but I love the kind of neutrally tones. Um, as you can see, I don't often go for a lot of neutrals, so it's uh, nice to have something with that. And I have been kind of looking for, I've been in love with the color Navy for a little while now and looking for a really good Navy, um, blue and this, is really to me screams true navy so i'm i probably the next time they do an update will be 
purchasing more of this maybe on a different base to do something else with um, that's completely all navy. So those are that's one stash enhancement. My second one this week is um, Tommy over at the Squirrel Pie Productions podcast, who's one of my all-time favorite podcasts. I never miss her episodes. Um, and actually, I was binge-watching her episodes when I decided to that I could start my own podcast. Um, so I, I just love Tommy. She's great. She uh, is the owner and dyer behind Moonstone Dye Works. And she has started doing limited amounts of... Um, some self-striping, and I've been wanting to get my hands on some of her yarn anyway. So last week she had an update, and this is was her two-color self-striping. Um, the colorway on this one is Love Child. This is her Merino 4-ply. It's a 75 Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards, 200 grams. So I'm excited to knit that up. I love good self-striping socks. And again, that's Moonstone Dye Works. And you can find all of uh, the information or the shop links in the description box below. So I think that covers all of that. The only other thing I wanted to mention, I've already mentioned a few podcasts, um, Tommy over at, um, the Squirrel Pie Productions, Jen with the Down Cellar Studio podcast, which is an audio podcast. Um, Kevin and Ray who are hosting the Needles at the Ready, um, let's hear it for the boys knit along. They have the Needles at the Ready podcast over on YouTube, um, and I love them, so check them out if you haven't already. And then the final one I want to mention is one of my friends from Omaha Knit Night has started her own uh, podcast. Uh, it's more of a knitting journal is what she's calling it, and it's Noelle Knits, N-O-E-L-I-E, -E, and then Knits. Um, you can find it on YouTube. Um, again, I linked it below. Um, she only has one episode out there, but if you're interested in... Um, seeing what she's up to, you definitely should check her out. Um, she is a prolific knitter and she makes beautiful projects and gorgeous color choices. Um, I, I love chatting with her about all things knitting. Um, and we, uh, I just, I love her aesthetic. I hate that word, but I, she always, um, everything she makes always really goes really well together. So, um, check out Noelle's podcast. Um, and, uh, give her some love over there. So Noelle knits. Um, I can't wait till she puts up another episode. And I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Covert Knits podcast. Again, thank you so much for sticking with me and checking this episode out. It is much longer than normal. I had a lot of knitting content this week. I think we'll be back to the shorter episodes next week. So until then, have a great one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!